Talk about it, Starfield. End of the show, I gotta say, watching the trailer, breathtaking. It's one of those things from the different locations and just seeing the difference between that moon versus the populated city, just amazing. The dog fighting, uh, the, just everything was so awesome. The team really outdid themselves. It's one like. of those things about a Bethesda Games a Studios game that I always love. And, and it's been the case, honestly, since you know I, I worked on Morrowind and Oblivion and all those games that you know we talked about. And ev- for every single one, you cannot pin people down to, oh, it's about this, because it's not. Like, ultimately what those games are are massive sandboxes where they give players just ridiculous amounts of freedom to say, you go figure out what kind of game you want to play and what kind of experience you want to have, because that's what this game is about. It's not us prescribing and saying, you have to do these things. In order. Like, no, it's about creating this huge uh, sandbox with an over a thousand planets you can completely explore and say, yeah, but you don't have to. Like, it's entirely up to you to figure out what what is fun for me. Do I want story? Do I want to join factions? Do I want to, you know, build outposts and gather resources to build more cool stuff? The team really puts all of those tools in the player's hands and step back and says, now it's time for you to, to tell the story of Starfield, which is your story, which is going to be different than mine, which is going to be different than everybody else's. And I think that's That's really where the magic of a Bethesda Game Studios game happens. Speaking about the scope of everything, Todd said that this is what an epic RPG is. What what does Bethesda define an epic RPG as? I I think, again, it's it's sort of leaning into, look, there's a lot of folks who take a lot of different approaches on what does an open world mean. And Bethesda Game Studios always pushes themselves to the most freedom and least limitations, right? Where... The items in the world are all real things. You walk into a store and there's a bunch of weapons or whatever. Like, that's not just art on a countertop. Like, you could pick those up. You could steal them and run out of it. You can create chaos. Like, we don't want to put too many limits on what the player is or isn't allowed to do. We love it when players say, I wonder what happens if, and then they try it. And then they get to see, like, oh, my Lord, chaos ensued and it was insanity. Everybody was shooting at me. And, like, that's, I think, the beauty of Bethesda Game Studios and the and the number of ways that they push for you to explore that, right? It's not just one. It's you could spend thousands of hours doing nothing but shipbuilding and, like, focus that as all you're about, and that's okay. But you could also be about exploring every planet and finding all of the good, and that's okay. Or you could just play the main story and be like, I want a kind of experience that I'm guided through so that I kind of get to see stuff, and I might stop here and there. Oh, there's a cool side quest that I got, but, you know, I want something that sort of leads me through because I'm a little, you know, it can be a little daunting to say you can go do whatever I want. Like, ooh, I don't know what I should do. So th- some folks want a little bit of a guided path or to understand where the fun is and no approach is wrong. Like for me, that's epic because it says we aren't putting any limits on what you can or can't do. We're going to set you loose and just sit back and watch the, the beauty that you create with your own stories and the way that you solve problems or choose to spend your time in this world we've created. I love that. And, I, you know, what you said about, um, you know, those moments that maybe you, you experience that I don't. Like, those are some of the best moments if I think back to playing RPGs when I'm discussing with my friends. Oh, did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Where did you see it? And, and having them go out and find it. So I think that's going to be one of those we, things. We talk about that a lot, that sort of water cooler moment. Exactly. Of, like, you come yeah. in the next day and you talk to everybody about, what you did and you were like, wait, I did that quest, but I did this completely different thing. And you sort of start to appreciate all of the choices that you could have made. You didn't even realize were an option. Like, oh, I didn't even think about doing that. Like, oh yeah, I just ran in and stole his ship and shot all of his crew members and took off. Like, you can do that. Like, oh yeah, you can do anything. Like that, I think that is um, a special part of a Bethesda Game Studios game. And, and when we say epic RPG, we mean all of the stories, all of them. All right, you just gave me some ideas for stealing people's ships. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, that's going to be top on the list to do in Starfield. Now, um, we saw quite a bit of combat and action in the game. That seems to also be, in, in addition to exploring and everything, that seems to be a, another huge focus of the game. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look, if you look at a game like Skyrim, which, like, everybody's played Skyrim at this point, it, it can, you know, a combat is a big part of that unless you decide it's not. Like, if you're one of those folks that says, actually, I'm going to do the alchemy thing, and I just go off and pick flowers and make potions and, like, live another life in another world this way, then combat isn't part of it. But, look, we know in an epic RPG, there's always bad people, they, you know, shooting at you. Sometimes you got to return fire, and there's a lot of fun to be had there. And so, you know, providing a lot of different skills that 
sort of determine how good you are in combat combined with all the different weapons in the game. And then you layer in ship combat and all of these other things. It starts to sort of paint a picture of just how broad or how deep the rabbit hole goes. It's going to be so impressive. Um, and you touched on it a little bit, and I want to talk about it because this was one watching the, the video, the demo, um, what I saw, and it really caught my eyes around the ship. Um, it's not just getting in the ship and that's your ship. There's so much behind it. Can you so talk much. about it a little bit? Yeah, like every ship is customizable to the nth degree and not just like cosmetically. I want my ship to look like this or look like that, though obviously that's totally a thing that you could do if you, all you care about is cosmetics. But it goes much deeper than that in terms of like what kind of shields you have, what kind of weapons you have, like what kind of ship are you building? What do you want it to be good at? What trade-offs are you willing to make or not? And then the other part of it is, of course, well, you can't just, like, it's a spaceship. Those aren't cheap. So you have to figure out, like, how am I going to do this? Where do I get the resources to build this stuff? What kind of, you know, skills do I need to level up to improve different parts of my ship beyond, you know, what I could do without those skills? So there's a lot of, again, choices in terms of you get to decide that, how much you want to Put into that or not? Do you just want to give somebody money for the parts that you want? Do you want to build it? All of those things are, are sort of part of the fun of deciding how much do you want to interact with this and how do you want to interact with it? Absolutely. I mean, just as you mentioned, the scope, the level of player agency, something that I feel like is going to just make Starfield such a, a special experience. So between Redfall, ESO, Fallout 76, and Starfield, you all are just we got a few games the game. coming. Yeah, we got a few games coming out. It's going to be so great. Um, Pete, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course, Pete.